Glenn had always known he liked animals more than people, but he would never have expected that one day he would end up following a mother bear into a forest. She showed him her lifeless cub, and his heart broke for both of them. But suddenly, something surprising changed the course of the day. Glenn's parents were social butterflies that seemed to get along swimmingly with everyone in town. He expected that he would be the same way, and was very excited when he got old enough to attend school. However, unlike his parents who were textbook extroverts, he was a bit shy and unassuming. The classes in school were small, and friend groups developed quickly, even in kindergarten. Glenn was nervous, and mostly stuck to the outside of social encounters. For this reason, he ended up being left out of any friend group. This continued for a few years as Glenn and his class went through elementary school. For a short while, his parents became concerned that he was being bullied in school, and so they set up some meetings with their son and the school administration. However, each time Glenn's parents were assured that he was not being picked on or deliberately excluded from things, it was just his way to sit on the sidelines and watch rather than play. His parents understood that their son was different from them and tried to encourage him to take up hobbies that would make him feel happy and comfortable. Glenn finally had the chance to explain his penchant for spending time outdoors, communing with nature. His first hobby that he got into was birdwatching, and he got books and binoculars to help him. Glenn's parents realized the amount of outdoor activities they could do with their son and happily broadened their horizons. As Glenn started high school, his family was already enjoying many activities such as camping, kayaking, hiking, and much more. When the teenage boy became more comfortable and confident in himself, he managed to make some friends in school as well, and his entire quality of life went up. At that point, Glenn was realizing just how much he enjoyed being around animals and he started pushing for his family to adopt a pet. Finally, for his 14th birthday, he got a dog, on the condition that he would care for it, raise it, and train it on his own. His parents anticipated Glenn doing the lion's share of the work with them stepping in to help or guide him along the way, but soon discovered themselves to be quite wrong in that regard. Glenn, in fact, took exceptionally good care of the animal, which became the best-behaved dog that they had ever seen. Glenn's predisposition towards animals was a real gift. By the end of high school, he was certain that he wanted to be a veterinarian for his career. It was a challenging path, and he had to take many difficult classes in school, but eventually he was accepted into a veterinarian program. His parents were very proud, and everyone in the community was rooting for him to succeed. It is perhaps not surprising then that Glenn was an exceptional student in veterinarian school and passed his exams with flying colors. He had started that journey thinking that he would return to his hometown and establish his own practice. But because of his extraordinary gifts, at graduation, he was offered an apprenticeship at a zoo. This was an incredible opportunity for him to work with large, exotic animals that he wouldn't otherwise have come across. So Glenn worked for a few years at the zoo, gaining knowledge and practical experience. At the end of his apprenticeship, he had to decide whether to move home or continue where he was. Given the warmth and support of his hometown, Glenn chose to return home. Sad to move away from the exotic animals, but happy to give back to his community, Glenn set up a small practice in town and then purchased a small cabin deep in the woods. He would live in the quiet calm of the wilderness, but still be a part of his community during the day. It was the perfect setup. Glenn loved his life, particularly on weekends when he could spend long mornings with his coffee on the porch. He also came to know the territory very well over time, thanks to all of his hiking and exploring the woods. He knew that there were some larger animals in the area, but had never gotten the pleasure of seeing them in person. That is, until one wilderness walk, a giant mother bear lumbered towards him. He had never come across one before, but his extensive knowledge about bears informed him that this encounter posed a huge threat to his safety. Mother bears are notorious for being more aggressive and volatile than other bears, as they normally take on the responsibility to protect the cubs. However, Glenn scanned the area and could not see any cub. He knew that brown bears could be spooked away, so he reached his arms up high and made himself as big as possible. Then he made as much noise as he could, yelling and clapping his hands. Nothing worked. The bear did not charge at him, but didn't retreat either. Glenn's heart began to pound as he realized he may need to improvise to extract himself from the situation. He kept stretching as big as he could and slowly backed away from the bear. 
to his great dismay, with every move backwards that Glenn took, the bear would take two steps forward towards him. The space between them was shrinking, so he planted his feet and stopped moving. The bear let out a big puff of air and slowly turned so that its back was to Glenn. Again, he tried to start backing away, and again the bear noticed, turned around, and closed the distance between them. The bear again huffed out some air and then turned around. Glenn paused, waiting. He realized that the bear wanted something from him, but he did not know what it was. Then the bear took a few steps away from Glenn, going deeper into the forest. It stopped and turned its head back to look at him with pleading eyes. He realized she was trying to get him to follow her, and despite his instinct yelling at him to run the other way, he obliged. The bear slowly led Glenn all the way to the middle of the woods where a stream ran through it. He knew that stream. Sometimes he liked to sit and read on the banks, and he had even occasionally fished in the water. While he looked around, the bear had gone right up the bank of the stream and then laid down, snout practically submerged in the water. Glenn followed, curiosity eating him up inside, but nothing would prepare him for what he was about to find. When he got to the bank and peered into the water, his heart sank in his chest. There was a fishing net in the water, probably left by some other fishing enthusiast. However, the net itself was not the issue. There was something stuck inside of it. Glenn squatted down to get a better look and the mother bear cried next to him. Finally, he saw it was a lifeless bear cub trapped in the net. The veterinarian felt his heart shatter. The bear had led him to a dead cub, probably hoping that he would be able to save it. But it was too late. Or was it? Suddenly, Glenn noticed the cub opening its eyes. It was still alive. He let out a surprised scream and moved closer to the net, trying to find a way to free the little bear. It was a tangled mess, and he saw how hard the mother bear had tried to rip it to free her child. He slowly and deliberately pulled out his pocket knife and cut the net open. He pulled the cub out and placed it down beside its mother. The cub laid there, weak and practically unresponsive after all the time spent in the cold water of the stream, struggling to keep its head afloat. Luckily, Glenn was there, and he gave the cub some emergency treatment, helping it clear the water from its lungs. Before he knew it, the bears were both up on their feet, hurrying away back into the woods. Glenn was exhausted, but proud to have saved a life. After resting against a tree for a couple of hours, he realized it was lunchtime and went back to his cabin. And when he got home, he found another surprise. There was a fish on his porch, with a wound on its body that looked like a slash from a bear paw. His new friends must have caught it for him, in a gesture that could only mean, thank you. Glenn couldn't help but shed some tears. He had truly picked the best life for himself, and this experience reminded him why he had always loved animals more than people. What do you think of this story? Do you have the same affinity for animals that Glenn has? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.